Welcome to the Animator Guild podcast. Our guest today is Olaf Storm. He is a freelance animator based in Austria and has a YouTube channel where he uploads tremendously high quality videos about the animation process. You might recognize some of these videos if you've spent time learning animation from YouTube. Before we get into our conversation, if you're working as a video creator or if you're aspiring to produce videos, there's one crucial resource which is incredibly advantageous for you to have. This podcast episode is sponsored by Storyblocks. Storyblocks is helping creators to bring stories to life by providing an unlimited library of over 1 million royalty-free, high-quality video, audio and images through cost-effective subscription plans. Storyblocks unlimited all access plan gives you unlimited downloads of everything in their library. That way you can try out multiple options quickly without worrying about being charged any extra. In addition to their HD and 4K footage, they have vast libraries of audio, sound effects, music, images and After Effects templates, which you can use in your video productions without worrying about copyright. These are all extremely useful libraries to have so for someone like me running an independent YouTube channel, stock footage makes sense in a lot of situations. There are a lot of different complex videos and complex effects that would cost me so much in time and resources to build by myself. Instead, I can just skip all of that and go to Storyblocks and find the exact video or effect that suits my needs. And these assets are all under the same subscription plan. So click the link in the description or go to storyblocks.com forward slash Howard Wimshurst to learn more about Storyblocks. Now please enjoy my conversation with Olaf Storm. Hi Olaf, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for coming on. Well, thank you very much for having me. So how are you today, this month, this week, this year? Uh, I'm all right. I'm all right. Uh, it's been a bit of a crazy one, I guess, but uh, I, I think we, maybe we who work a lot from home haven't been <laughs> affected the worst um it's been okay for us i guess we've managed to avoid dodge a few bullets i think yeah totally yeah at some point it's like oh is there a difference if there's a lockdown or not i mean yeah. obviously it can stop your personal life but yeah work-wise it's kind of the same <laughs> yeah yeah and, and you've been uploading to your channel i see yeah a little bit yeah i'm trying to busy. also push for yeah, both for YouTube and a bit of uh, Patreon and stuff. So mm. yeah, I'm trying to trying to create as much as possible while also working, of course. So it's like a, a balancing act. Oh wow, so many questions I have for you. Like, I guess first of all, you touched on that just now, balancing your personal projects with work. Is there an overlap there, or do you find a way to balance it? And if so, how do you manage that balance? Hmm. You mean in terms of like uh, if the the stuff I do personally also bleeds into the work or? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I guess I guess like um, I mean in a way like I, I work with animation both for for um, a professional like in commercials and stuff as well as my personal films. So of course learning something new for the personal films also translates well over to um, to my uh, yeah my my. Uh, uh, commercial work of course but um like obviously i don't get hired often to do like uh, 2d animations and stuff it's mainly more motion graphic things and stuff mm. like that so um do you work f uh freelance yeah, yeah i'm freelance yeah okay no i'm freelance i was i was for, with the studio for a few years and then i went freelance and have been ever since so uh, which studio was that it was uh stink they were called stink digital it was like an advertisement and uh kind of uh, interactive uh, agency in London. And when did you decide to go freelance? I was uh, 2015 or 14, so 15, I think it was. Oh, okay. um, so it's been a few years now. And was, was it a decision or did something force your hand? Did you see an opportunity? What, uh, what were the circumstances mm -hmm. that led to that? I think I started out by just, uh, like I had a few friends who, who were freelance at the agency who also said like, uh, maybe you should try that because you know, you, you can, work whenever you want <laughs> for whoever you want um, and I realized that it's kind of a, it's a it's a freedom it's obviously a little bit of a bit of a risk to to um, to jump on to the freelance life if you if you didn't know like how it's gonna turn out mm -hmm. but 
I think after after realizing that there's so much work in animation, it's like it's completely <laughs> completely a good decision to do. Okay, well that's good. Um, yeah, I, I can see a lot of similarities between us both, really, just from from the external things as well, like the fact that we both have YouTube channels. Um, kind yeah. of growing our, our YouTube channels. We're also working freelance. It's almost like we're kind of doing very similar things kind of parallel to each other. Um, although, yeah, totally, yeah. yeah, I guess one of the things I that I don't have in common is that like after graduating, I went straight into uh, freelance animation. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'm, how did I'm just... you feel? How did that go for you? Like, how, was that like a a tricky start to like find clients or how, how did you go about that? Well, I was, um, I was kind of doing freelancing in wh while I was at university and before that, while I was at college mm. and, and even when I was in high school, I was, um, doing, uh, some commissions. Um, it was kind of like, I, I was, I was really looking forward to graduating cause it meant that you know, instead of it being this thing I did um, on weekends and after after class and things, I could actually focus on it 100% of the time and just wake up each day and just have a single task. I'm, I'm not much of a multitasker, so I really don't mm. like having multiple things on at once. I really like to just focus on a single thing. Like for this week, it's the podcast. This is just a podcast week. Um, okay. So yeah, I, I like that. But anyway, um, what was I going with that? I was rambling on about, okay. Yeah. So yeah. So I don't have that experience that you do with the working for a studio. So what was the sentiment in the studio? Did you see it change over the course of time while you were in the studio with regards to freelance uh, working? Uh, well, I think, I think, I mean, every studio will change, uh, eventually when, when, when you work then I think the dynamics will not always be the same because I think that was also a reason for leaving for me was that people had moved on and um, you know there were a f few friends that I made there that also kind of went freelance and then I thought of sort of joined in on that train as well. Have, have you ever thought of like forming a collective with them? Uh, I, I don't know I think uh, I kind of like working on my own because I can just control my time completely mm. however I want it. Um, like I always thought like eventually like if you grow as an as a as an animator I mean I could maybe have a company with employees but then you know is that then I have to have all that admin come in as well and I think it's um, <laughs> it's also like a balancing act to find where what what fits for you basically mm. yeah I guess yeah when you st do you know what I mean like yeah. as a freelancer you have when you're only on your own you can just like I can be off for two weeks if I want to and just mm. say I'm, I'm not around. And then if I would if I would work with others, I couldn't say that. Like, yeah, you don't get that as a studio owner. No, 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 for sure not. You have to make sure that your people get paid. And yeah, exactly. So you got to ask, like, do you really want it? Yeah, that's true. So I think I think that's a, a thing. Like I kind of want to steer more towards my, obviously my personal stuff. I like I like the whole YouTube thing, but that's still you know to to make that into a full-time thing is also a quite a, a tricky thing i think is that um, something you're aiming for i don't know i actually don't know yet i think it's an explore explorative thing like i want to just see how that goes yeah um i don't want to rely on it you know because you never know with with these things how long that lasts or mm. what's the interest <laughs> it's certainly a good thing to have oh for sure having the youtube channel oh it's changed a lot for me to to have that of course like i I, it's a really cool way to like get uh, in communication with other people as well, and uh, and uh, just you know be able to share your work to a lot of people, which is super cool. What um, are like what are some of the benefits or or some of the the differences that have happened since you started documenting your process? You know, showing your screen recordings and letting people in yeah. on your process. I think I just became a lot more productive. Uh, I think that's my main thing with my YouTube channel. It's mm. like a f thing that forces me to make stuff. Cause it's like, if I don't, if I had no one watching, th then I could just be like, ah, oh, I'm just gonna watch Netflix <laughs> all day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but if I know that like, I'm, I've now said that I'm making a film or something, um, then people kind of just, I, I, I feel like people want to know what's going on. 
and therefore I push myself to just make videos about it. And of course that that in itself takes a lot of the time, like making the video is almost more than making the artwork within mm. the video. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, it's a process and I, I, I quite like that, that it sort of forces me to, to make more content. Just the, mo the moment I started on like Instagram to post something that was, I feel like just putting your work out online really helps you to, to be a little bit more productive, mm. or at least for me. Did you start on Instagram? Yeah, just, uh, just uh, uploading like illustrations. Uh. Mm. I feel like it's less suited for animators. I don't know. Mm. Maybe yeah. it's the square aspect ratio or, or yeah, the fact true. that it's like you can't... There's no, com uh, real, commu no real communication either. It's like mm. it's hard to, to tell a story or something. You just kind of post a finished picture or something and that's it. That's true. Yeah. Well, with your channel, how much do you... How much of what you do is based on people's requests? Like... Uh, nothing. <laughs> nothing <at laughs> okay, <all. laughs> so you've just got your own direction. You're just like, I'm yeah. going to steer it in this direction and yeah. keep up with me. Yeah, I think so. I just want to. I want to make sure it's like what I want to do. Otherwise, it becomes incredibly heavy work because it's mm. it doesn't pay enough to be a full time job. Mm. Like the time you put into the videos are just eventually not uh, you know that lucrative so i i would then rather just do exactly what i want to do so i can be excited about it yeah uh, and not having to like force out things you know yeah if it stops becoming becoming fun then it's like yeah why why, why am i doing this well, yeah, yeah then i then i feel like it you would have i have to find a way that that's also you know paying my bill or something because it's uh it, that's that can easily you can just burn out completely from that i think mm. So did you start with just 3D and then you moved into 2D? No, kind of the opposite. I was uh, always like illustrating and stuff when I was a kid and, and, uh, and that. And then I started learning After Effects because me and my brother started making like uh, films with, we just bought a camera and started making our own films. Um, so it was more like right. a live action to start with. Uh, and I learned After Effects and, and you know, just to be able to put explosions in my films as a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, it just uh, kind of eventually moved over that I could merge both the illustrations with things like an After Effects. Uh, so I was, I was quite straight on 2D only for until I started like working in that studio in Stink. Mm. Um, and there we, they, they had Cinema 4D in the studio and I had a, my friend Ryan joined the studio and he he was like really good at that so i had to i had to kind of keep up with with what what we were making so i need to needed to learn 3d uh, so from there I, I picked up that and then i've just tried to kind of merge everything together. yeah i was gonna say now you're like you're merging the two so it's kind of it's almost like when i see your animations it's like i i can't really tell a lot of the time what's 3d and what's 2d unless it kind of moves and i and i also know as an animator oh there's a car in the scene that's definitely gonna be 3d because mm. cars are difficult to draw um mm. with the the kind of that yeah, kind of uh, rigid yeah. structure but like, yeah, a lot of man-made stuff is easy to just replace with 3D, like yeah. the angular things, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, what would you say you've kind of learned since picking up 3D then? You know, do you bring uh, lessons from 3D into 2D animation and vice versa? Yeah, I think I think they should just be like tools that you should uh, use. Like certain shots will require certain things, right? Uh, mm. If you want a very... Uh, three-dimensional camera moving in your shot then it's way easier to set that up in a 3d space than to like try to picture that and draw every frame you know yeah. so um i i try to i try to just find when it you know use it when it uh, when it's needed mm, i like that uh, and uh because I, I don't want to be too like um how do you say it like um um purist you know like i right. only do it a specific <laughs> way like 2d animation has to be done this way i think you, sh you should just use whatever method works for you and uh and uh, if it if it looks you know cohesive in the end then that's the end goal i guess that definitely strikes me as being like a a commercial animator's point of view especially like when i like when i get on a commission that, that's kind of my attitude to it it's like I'm just going to use whatever tool I have to get to that result that I need. Um, 
and oh, if yeah. that's 3D, then so be it. Yeah. Yeah, but I think I think that's I think that's a good good way of seeing it. Um, yeah, I I got some questions here for you. I mean, I've just kind of been yeah. free flowing here, but um, I don't know if you uh, if you no, oh, it's good. That's good. Considered any of these uh, questions before, I, uh, or when I sent them to you? Um, yeah, like, sure. So, your uh, your film sensations was uh, was a really cool film, by the way. Thank you uh, for <laughs> making Thank that you. for us. Um, <laughs> oh, that was so cool. <laughs> Um, and it made me think, you know, oh, this guy is like different. Like the message of this is a very nuanced and it's more like just taking you on these three separate experiences. And it just made me want to ask you, what kind of stories do you find yourself drawn to as maybe as uh, when you're looking for inspiration? Hmm. Yeah, uh, I think I think that's a, a tricky one because like, um, you know, like, yeah, the question here is about stories, right? So it's not about like the subject matter, really, because mm. like, a story can be about anything, really. Um, I think I think I like uh, films or whatever or stories that aren't too uh, maybe too linear or obvious in some ways. Yeah. I guess if I watch a film, if I prefer, uh, or I guess also like something that gives a bit of a a mood that uh, sticks with me afterwards. Um, but it, that's a quite tricky one, like what stories I'm drawn to, um, or what I, um, yeah. What would you What would you say? Like, what, what's a What's a story for you that you that you and well, like, when you're making films and things, it's it's a weird thing because it's a lot of it is based on intuition for me. But I will mm-hmm. I will, I use the word dynamite quite a lot um, in okay. my in my mind. So I'm like, you know, uh, I'll read like a story in the news and I'll be like that's dynamite and that right. means to me like there's something there that's like triggering questions and um or, or or it's causing me to replay a scene in my head repeatedly and and it's causing and especially is provoking questions mm. so that's just like that's kind of how I would put it into words for me perhaps um and and of course it can come from anywhere but um uh there there's also structures after that that i would i would lend to them i would say oh, okay you know maybe i can give this character an arc where they mm. <laughs> learn something uh things like that which are very much like that will kind of they're kind of more formulaic options mm. yeah i think i think for like films that i enjoy watching might not be the films i'm making always either mm. like i i think uh especially in like the animation format you kind of have to be quite especially also when you work alone on it you have to be quite short <laughs> like you can't do yeah. too long formats so i have to be smart about how i like uh, format it and it could be you know like the sensation was more about giving a sort of uh, sending a mood more than like a specific storyline it's more like experiences that maybe people can relate to mm. um and uh, i think that's quite cool also in animation to not always go maybe the either action or or i don't know kind of uh, for children or whatever it's like to to just make like a normal normal yeah. film in in animated form which is quite cool i think yeah it um, definitely kind of it felt to me like you were you were giving a lot of attention to the smaller things like the more subtle things Mm. that maybe maybe an action animator would miss them like it could be just a a blink or like a focus shot on the hands or Mm. or something like that or like when the rain starts to fall and Mm. it would just be that little moment that's um that maybe an action film would kind of not notice it would go by unnoticed because of the 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 big dynamic thing that's happening yeah maybe maybe i think yeah it's like uh I and mean, i'm not saying action films aren't uh <laughs> like a thing to go for either because that's they can be oh, just can be different really nicely made too yeah, yeah it's just um just what i, I kind of prefer i kind of wanted i wanted to to bring this sort of live action element into the 2d um 2d form or the animated form as well so like almost like you shot the film 
um, yourself or mm -hmm. like with the camera but then just I don't have to make it overly fantastical just because it's animation I think it's cool that you can in animation like I, I see the point of bringing you know bringing you to worlds where maybe you couldn't go with that easily with live action but um, but I also like to not have to do that just mm -hmm. because we're in animation do you know what I mean yeah do you do you sh did you shoot the film shot for shot like with a tripod and things on on your own how did you what was your process like for for that yeah so that one was like uh, so traced right so I, I i shot the actors and then i i drew on top of that footage um so for, for sensations that was mm. um yeah so that obviously it's a, a process on its own i think i took that route route because i was also you know like i needed to make sure that i could get this out in in time or in, i mean there was no deadline but it was more like i just wanted to make the film mm. and i didn't want it to take years <laughs> so i i tried it i tried a method there which which i think worked and then uh, obviously for my current film now i'm not doing the uh, i'm not shooting it like that i'm trying to do it more the sort of traditional way um but uh but yeah it's, i i think i think it was just a uh, a method I went for just to speed up the process a bit, and I noticed that it sort of it sort of worked well with the, with my backgrounds and so on. Um, yeah. Sorry, what did you ask something, and I, I kind of rambled on in another. No, I think we I think we are covering that that kind of uh, topic of. <laughs> oh yeah, if I shot it, it on like tripods, and, yeah. So yeah. I, I I did shoot it myself, and I used uh, friends and my girlfriend and so on to to act for me. So it was, uh, it uh, it definitely helped to do it that way. Um, and I acted in it too. Yeah. So did you do that on location, like in the lake scene? Was that, uh, did you go out to the... To oh, no, no, of... no, 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 I just <laughs> needed to shoot it up behind. It doesn't, doesn't matter where you are. You just have to have the, the right angle for it. So at some places you might, if you want a really low angle, like there was a shot with the, with the girl kind of looking out on top of the, uh, like from a very low angle, she's on top of a roof mm. and she looks out. So I, I kind of had to be quite low to shoot that. So I had to find a place where I could do that. So obviously a little bit of location I needed, but uh, most of it could could just be done, you know, anywhere. Oh, that's, so. pretty, that's pretty cool though. I, I find that interesting, the, the intersection, like where where you decide to leave the the reference the comfort of having a reference where you're like oh, okay mm. this is this is a photograph or like this is a video that i took i know this to be how it's rendered and mm. then be like okay but beyond there is like a you know an environment or something and, and that's where the imagination takes over yeah i think i had i had a pretty clear idea of each shot when i shot them obviously mm. so i i had done also a bunch of the backgrounds so i could almost just put the characters into them like I just had to line up my camera with that uh, and some of them were in 3d built in 3d but not like done the paint overs and stuff on yet so I I just um, I could then kind of align it up with what I shot uh, in live action so it, that worked really well mm. and you know you get all the character animation for free like you, you all the acting just comes out of a bunch of shots and you go okay this edits well now I can turn it into animation right you know, so it was quite a quite a fun process to work that way too. Oh, that's cool. You said you you're moving away from from like a rotoscoped um, yeah. method for your for your new short film, which you're working on now. Yeah, yeah. So now I, I just wanted to not. I don't want to be the rotoscope guy either. So <laughs> you know, I want to I want to I want to try all sorts of things. So, and I had done non rotoscope work before sensations of course so it was just like uh, it's just the, the method I went for in that um, but I, what I do try to do now as well is um, I still don't want to like be too precise with the, like um, just keeping it all the same method if I like I just made a few um, my main characters in my current film that I'm working on I just made those into 3D characters as well so that I can use as maybe reference to uh, you know create a uh, Maybe also, I don't know if I will wrote over them or, or not, but we can we can see like uh, there are definitely ways I can I can uh, expand the two D kind of skill I have with maybe my three D skills as well. Mm. And and your latest film is on climbing, right? 
Yeah, was, yeah. So that's to like do with I always make stuff about my my passions. Like I think that's the best way to make a film about stuff you enjoy. You're an outdoors guy. Yeah, yeah. I live in Innsbruck here in Austria. Oh, so great. We have the mountains right next to us here. So it's like you make films where about what you, what you like doing. I think I think that's the about what you like. Yeah, I, I really like doing that because it just means I sit on a lot of um, information to like write about or or uh, you know be excited about and it mm. keeps me also motivated to keep working on that film if it's a, on a topic that i'm like really really like so uh, yeah i mean you you were animating a clip recently where the character is is bouldering uh with mm-hmm. a with a map beneath and and bouldering happens to be something that i've recently gotten into my, my oh, younger awesome. brother has gotten into it uh got me into it um although i'm, I'm not as good as him um, you're in you're in London, right? I'm in London. Yeah, so where, we do where, indoor where do bouldering. Go? Where do um, you go? Uh, well, oh, we, uh, we go to, to Harrow the... Wall. Okay, okay, yeah. cool. Um, right, so. uh, until the lockdown happened, so mm. so yeah. now we can't. Um, but yeah, I, I thought I looked at it and I was like, oh yeah, that's really accurate because I've I've often kind of laid under an overhang and then and then gone for that kind of move and so i was like yeah that's actually really accurate and it's got that i think if you weren't a climber and you tried to animate that clip you probably it probably wouldn't yeah it would just be someone like spider-man yeah it would be like (laughs) spider-man exactly yeah Yeah. Yeah. so it's got that you need like all the the weight and the and the the struggle everyone who's climbing knows it's a massive struggle (laughs) Do you do you um, find there's like a conflict between you being like an outdoors guy um and the fact that animation is always sat behind a desk in like a dark room? Oh yeah, like but I mean and it's only recently that I moved down here. I was been only here for two years now. Like I, I always always been a person to love the outdoors, but then I lived in London for eight years and uh, oh, right. There it's just hard, it's hard to get out of the city to do yeah. things. So you only went like on your holidays to do things. Um, yeah. So so just moving down here just turn turn that completely around. Uh, where basically I now have the th- the places I would go for holidays now just a twenty minute ride uh, with oh, the car. Right. So 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 yeah, I, I think I think for sure. Uh, like I still obviously sit a lot inside and work on animations and stuff, but I can just combine it with with the popping out for a bouldering session on on real rock or in the gym or whatever. And uh, and I, I, yeah, it's just it's a great balance I, I found. Are, are you? Do you submit your films to film festivals? I'm wondering if that's something I haven't you. Actually, I've been su- super do. lazy with that stuff. I, I just <laughs> kind of put them up. I always feel like when you when you've made a film, you're just so drained on that so just be, let's, <laughs> let's put it up and start with something new yeah i know it's yeah. Been stupid probably um no i haven't really no i i do see your films and think oh yeah they probably do pretty well at, at film festivals yeah so it oh, might geez. be worth yeah. it might be worth trying yeah is that is that still a thing though is that like uh is it is like a, it's a, like a, a very a, different crowd it's like you go there and you wonder if anyone there is actually like on the internet you know it's, yeah. it's very it's very different and it's a, but it's a cool experience because you know you get to I oh, but you mean actually seeing it in a place where you can go and and see yeah. it yourself as well oh like yeah in a movie oh, that'd theater be cool. oh yeah. that'd be cool yeah 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 i went to uh because because with um with encounter that's yeah. like a film set in the mountains and yeah. i so that's a skiing one right yeah 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 and i was like oh uh I'm going to look for niche film festivals where I think that it it will have extra appeal. And um, it got into the Kendall Mountain Festival, which is like oh, yeah. specifically for outdoor films. It's in this uh, place called Kendall, which is in the yeah. uh, it's in the Lake District in, in the UK. And yeah, um, yeah it's, it's, it's really cool because it's like specifically for kind of outdoor films. Yeah, I've, I thought about that for, with this film I'm making now. I wanted to... Um, I wanted to send that to like there's a, also one called the European Outdoor Film Festival like I, I would like mm. to try that type of thing because um, th- that is the, actually the only time I've thought about film festival because <laughs> then it's also for the the kind of audience that I'm 
like I, I since I'm a climber I like that sort of uh, that culture I I uh, would love for them to see that this too not just the animation kind of um, uh, how would you say crowds you know like you also yeah. have it would be cool to show that also f- that there is there is films being made in animation about climbing not just live action stuff for example um, so <laughs> yeah. so that could that would be really cool that's that's true I think I'm going to try to aim for that. And I think it would probably be like the only animation being shown there because it's surprisingly yeah. uncommon at these festivals to have like 2D animations especially. But yeah, also but, I, but I also think it's just maybe not the the audience is there to for that. They're kind of there to see maybe someone doing an extreme feat on, <laughs> I don't know, skis or on, on, on rock or whatever. Maybe. Um, but, it, but it could be cool if it's a, it's a short film, you know, that could could might might be part of it oh i think it could be i, I think it really could be i think you'd, it, you would get a lot of support at, at somewhere like that for mm. for that kind of film yeah that's, that's a good idea yeah <laughs> um that's cool that yours were in one of those that's that's really nice yeah i mean well you know you you, you really don't know how it's going to do until you submit so it's worth just trying and seeing if it does because um because it, it can surprise you. And when you go to some of these, you're like, really? That got in? <laughs> Just, mm, yeah. you, you know, and that kind of gives me encouragement. And it also lets me encourage others to, to try it because I'm like, hey, it could get in. It could. It really could. That's cool. Yeah. I, I will definitely look into that. That's a good idea. So uh, I I was wondering, like, what your goal is uh, right now or it kind of sounds like you're kind of undecided a little bit uh i don't know i think it's always just a, an experiment this whole thing so i i obviously i obviously work uh, i still work with clients and agencies and stuff so i i keep down on on the side doing that while also doing the youtube stuff mm. and i would obviously want to make that the the youtube and my patreon and stuff grow so that that takes up more of my time than um than what it cur- than what it currently is um and but but i feel like it's a it's a risky move as well to mm. to just rely on that because it's you know something like covid can happen and then what does that mean does people stop maybe you know paying their patreon subscriptions or whatever yeah. and then you just kind of out there suddenly but if you have like a you know clients in the commercial industry it's a lot kind of deeper and a thing that is a little bit more secure i would say yeah um so i think i'm i'm i'm, I'm trying to find the balance between the two where i'm not yeah. like fully focusing on one or the other I wonder how like, do you feel about that like because you you have like courses and stuff you you've you kind of gone a bit more um i don't know you, i feel like you've done more uh like building up a community and things right around, yeah yeah what you well making? i personally have uh been shifting a little bit uh i still do commissions but i've reduced the frequency of them uh right now so that i can focus more on uh, on that, you know, because mainly because it scales better, you know, I, I feel like mm. I can make one client really happy uh, if I focus on that client. But then, yeah. like, if I make if I come out with a course or something, or, or I oh, yeah. create something that can be can be seen and consumed by a lot of people, then I can make like thousands of people happy. So it's really about totally maximizing the impact that i can have with my time because you know yeah. we we've only got like you know we've got finite amount of time for all of this stuff every everyone has 24 hours in a day and totally. so it's like what you do with that time and and um fortunately I, I think i have found some uh some really a really nice crowd on on youtube and and online in general uh, which is like encouraging me to to do more of that. You know, it's, they're basically kind of saying, if you do this stuff for us, if you make this stuff, we will support you. You know, financially is what it comes down to. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's amazing. Yeah. I think that's as you say, it's very scalable when you suddenly go from five thousand subscribers to two hundred thousand subscribers. You suddenly have obviously on YouTube, it's 
it's it's you have to bring that people somewhere else like you done with your courses or yeah. or something or something else but uh or patreon or something but it's uh it's definitely yeah. scalable yeah because ad revenue in itself is yeah i know yeah that's yeah. A, that's a joke yeah yeah uh, i I, w- I would love to kind of focus more on that as well i just think there's um it's also finding the right time when to like kind of switch over the, the full gear onto that instead of the, uh, the other side because i it's also a, a like a risk to make a course for example if it doesn't sell yeah you know? and then you just you just spend ages on that and then no one saw it yeah um, like so that's also a, that's a real concern for for me right yeah. now with what i'm doing you know um so yeah that, that's very possible and uh so i guess that's why it's good that, that you have like a conversation also with your audience yeah like, I, I think you have a better conversation than i have for example like i i i have a patreon and there's a bunch of people there but it's not like a, a very um, back and forth type conversation going on and therefore i think if you have those people that you know kind of give you feedback saying yeah we are we are with you on this or something then that also helps of course yeah like i i do try and um i do try and stay informed with what people are asking for but mm. that doesn't necessarily mean to like you said earlier like cuz i asked you earlier how much how much do you do based on what mm. people uh what people want yeah. and you said like nothing which to be honest is not a bad uh i, I don't think that's such a bad tactic to to, to just mm. do what you feel is but is i really try to make it i also i obviously try to make it so that people might enjoy it i'm not yeah. saying I, it's not for it's only for me or something but it's like it's uh i i don't want it to be that i am suddenly now working for a lot of people who have yeah. demands on me you know what i mean like uh, yeah it's just to be on my terms and then and then i just uh, i try to fit it so that it might be interesting to people or or hopefully interesting to people yeah like if i was 100 percent steered by popular demand i would mm-hmm. be non-stop making hulk versus superman <laughs> yeah Goku versus Superman fan parody fight scene animations. And yeah. I know that some people would be super excited for that. They'd be around a, a low a- age range, you know, they'd mm-hmm. be young and um, begin like new to animation, probably. And, um, and are like, what would happen to my, like my legacy? And <laughs> I hope that doesn't sound yeah. pretentious to use the word legacy, but like, I don't want to I be agree. known for that, you know. I don't want to be. I, I don't want to be that guy. Um, someone else no, can I, be I, that I guy. Completely agree on that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not good to just do that. Yeah, you have to keep your, um, like whatever you are making in there still. So it's not just, just to get the clicks or or whatever. I think that's also yeah. maybe maybe an audience. There is an audience for that too that people who are kind of a little bit maybe fed up on just the clickbaity stuff as well yeah. you just want to see someone do what they like uh, or i hope i hope that people want to see that at least because i i kind of find that's what i'm looking for in in if i'm looking at youtube or whatever like it's channels that has like a, a passion behind it maybe or someone who's really excited about what they're making it's always yeah. more fun than just than just kind of a i don't know it's hard to give examples but yeah you know what i mean yeah, there, there has to be, I think there has to be a movement back at some point uh, mm. towards authenticity and like what people, and, and, and also if, if everyone went after the most popular thing, there would be no diversity. So mm. diversity comes from, from people taking their own initiative and doing, making That's content true. that, that um, there might not be a, a demand for it. Sometimes you've got to make things that people didn't know they wanted yeah yeah for sure and i think i think that's what a lot of people find as well i, I get a lot of comments on people saying like i i'm not into animation but i just happen to enjoy watching this you know this was yeah. a fun process to watch so, and now they are subscribed <laughs> it's like oh, that's that's pretty cool actually that you don't have to be like knowledgeable about what i'm making to to enjoy it yeah hmm um yeah going back to the uh your your experience as a freelancer mm-hmm. like what are the things that you get requested 
most like wh- what do people request from you the most would you say and and where do your clients find you and, and what's the demand would you say for, for the work i think i think i um since i worked a bunch of years in an agency uh i kind of picked up a lot of contacts there first and then when a few of us went freelance and uh, other people later went freelance you kind of have a a network Mm. and then you you also start uh, like being recommended if you've done a job and then someone recommends you to another place so i've actually it's it's mainly through my other through either through like colleagues i've worked with or just other agencies that i've ended up working with that they just kind of keep passing your name on so i think Mm. i have kind of a steady client uh, base now that i'm not really leaving too much so i don't often take on a lot of new clients every now and then i do but uh, i kind of have returning uh, clients it's it's quite nice because then you can you just rely on or not rely on them but you just have like i know that there will be someone around now who needs a bit of work and uh and you just kind of slot it in when whenever they come to you mm-hmm. and it's mainly it's mainly just um i would say my the stuff i make is is uh it's just either like 3d um graphics I, it could be from anything from like um commercials to interactive displays in stores or whatever it's just basically just commercial projects uh, mm. for for I don't know, brands or whatever um so it, var- it varies quite a lot but sometimes motion graphically like after effect work after effects work sorry uh, or uh, sometimes it's uh yeah full-on like uh, uh yeah 3d setups with the uh, realistic rendering and stuff like this it's not very often 2d animation like oh, characters like i barely do that ever as as a i've done a few jobs like that that have like what i do for my personal films um because it's not such a high demand to to i feel like there's less work in that than there is in just motion graphics and it's also a lot more time consuming so you have to find a job that then hires you for quite a long time to make something um, yeah, about that. It, what's the what's the kind of turnaround you might have on on these commercial projects? Yeah, like weeks, a few weeks, I would say. It's really, like, uh, from days to weeks. Some some are just like two days here and there, what? and then yeah, just to to you know, like someone has a pitch for a for a client, they want to just kind of have a few uh, um, style frames or a, a few animatic stuff or like uh, stuff that might oh, be okay. the final thing, and then I make that for them, and then maybe we make the project or not. Uh, sometimes it's a uh, full on, you know, like a CG, <laughs> CG thing. I don't know. It, it goes from everything. Like I've done work for uh, Diesel and Nike and stuff in like oh, wow. in store displays and things. And uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of different things, but always through an agency. So it's I I never go straight to to client in that case. Oh, OK. And what would so what would you say is the hardest project you've done in that world? Oh. Oh, that's such a hard. Uh, hmm. Uh, that's a, that's a tricky one. I don't actually know. Because um, <laughs> the hardest thing might not always be the hardest uh, technically, right? It could be just that it was so many amends or so many changes going on. Like the worst right. thing is when you've dug yourself really deep into like a three D pipeline or something, and then you have to just completely reshape it or something and you you mm. know you, you put so much effort in and then you have to kind of um, leave it all and and uh, and <laughs> start over maybe or or you know you know how it goes sometimes the client changed their minds last minute or whatever you um, have you ever like felt out of your depth like i know i would probably be panicking if i was like working for nike or something i'd be like oh my god um not really because you, you're still kind of behind an agency and i often don't work only myself then in those bigger jobs it's mm. like maybe a, a team there um and then no it's not too bad i think you just have to make it work and often you know you're not it's not like one day um, you have to do it all in one day or something so you can always find the time to to get it right but mm. um but uh, yeah it can sometimes feel like tricky of course when you're not sure where where you're going if or if the client is just just not responding too well to to what we're making or something then of course you can get stressed but 
I think it's just that it's the process. You have to just keep uh, keep giving them stuff, and then eventually <laughs> they'll they'll be happy. You know. <laughs> do you like present them like a variety of options, or do you just go straight for it? Do you just say like, "Hey, I, oh, no. I know what I'm doing here." No, and... no, no. We have obviously. I, I I always with all my clients, I will have almost a day to day conversation where mm. I show what I'm what I'm doing every every day and so on. So so and that also takes a lot of stress out of me because I know that in that case I'm going in the right direction or or not because that would be super scary if you have like two weeks and then you give give it to them and they go nope <laughs> you know <Yeah. laughs> okay <laughs> yeah yeah so now you have to obviously communicate back and forth is there much stuff that you found you had to learn when you stepped into the freelancing world versus working behind a producer mm. yeah I, I think so um what do you mean like in t without by me maybe being like, my own kind of boss yeah then, like what soft do you mean? skills uh i don't know administration or oh yeah a anything really yeah. like yeah that's i mean that's the kind of that's almost more stressful than than doing <laughs> the animations isn't it yeah. just like making sure that you you definitely are doing your accountancy stuff right and <laughs> whatever um i think yeah that stuff uh it's something you have to learn, of course, but it's um, I, I, I ra gladly then pay a, a person to help me out with those kind of mm. business details. But uh, but just communicating with with clients and so on is kind of, uh, yeah, that's something you have to just learn. And you also get client or if I get certain clients that I like working with, that's also a great thing because then I can kind of keep that um, that uh, relationship going. Right. So you want to work with people that. Mm that know you and, and, and that, you know, you work well with. So you find kind of a, a balance there. Do you just tell them like, hey, I had a, a really good time working on this. Let's stay in contact. Yeah. Do you just hope that you yeah. did a good enough job that they'll like come back? Yeah, well, often you, you, you get that feeling from them as well, right? Mm. Like uh, I would rather see, kind of hear them out a little bit or like <laughs> try to read them a bit and see like, you know, if you if if they are happy with everything, then then they will most likely come back. So, is there like any advice you would give to someone who was trying to get into freelancing? Yeah, um, I think uh, I, I I mean it's so hard because we only have our own experience, so I, I cannot say for everyone. But it's if you're obviously I'm I'm quite passionate about this as well so I, mm. I spend a lot of my free time making animations and so on so uh, by just being like always trying to learn new things and improving yourself you will you will get work I, I think that's a, a a good good thing to or like a good um, 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 what do you say uh, advice maybe <laughs> yeah it's um, like not a matter of if because, it's a matter of when as yeah. long as you can keep on yeah, improving I, I would, yeah, because if you really enjoy it and and you are obviously like teaching yourself it a lot, then you will be noticed by by your clients uh, as well. So, because it's a, a bit of a competition, isn't it? Like, there's a lot of people out there who wants to do it, but then there's also a lot of work. So, uh, sure. it's they just need to fit fill a slot, and often many people are booked out. And if maybe at this time you are available, and then you just have to, <laughs> you know, <laughs> find the right time for it. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I know a lot of people who talk to me about it who are maybe trying to get into it. They're, they're kind of worried that, like, maybe they don't have something that's desirable in mm. in the market right now. Is there, like, mm. do, do you think there's, like, a level you can get to where you can certainly know? Or do you think you just have to uh, look at who's talking, who who's asking you? Yeah, that's that's a good point. Um, I, I, ooh, that's hard to say, but I think there is definitely work for all kind of levels. Like you, you will have very simple animation that needs to be done as well by some mm. clients, you know. So you don't have to be like super good in every software just to to get work. Um, but uh, of course, the the more you teach yourself, the the more work you can take on. And I mm. think you you should be. You shouldn't take on a job if you're like unsure you can make it or not. You know, like that's. Right. I, I would. I would. Uh, you. You don't have to know exactly what you're gonna be making, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't go freelance and like 
take on a big project if I'm like, you know, winging it and just going mm. like, maybe I can't pull this off because that's also quite a, a, I don't know, a bad position to be in in the end. You want to be in control, I guess. Yeah. So um, that's why I think it's good to start uh, in an agency if you can, because you there you can kind of be introduced to the to the the way things work and and you you know it's not all on you really it's more like you you sit behind this curtain of the of the agency right so so yeah it's a it's a bit of it's a bit easier than to to struggle than if you're a freelancer yeah. who's been hired and then the client isn't happy you know yeah so how, how do you find like i mean you worked for a long time you said as well you did it even since high school so i'm sure you kind of taught yourself what worked and and what didn't with clients right by yeah, starting I, I guess, maybe very um, small then on small small little <laughs> uh, small projects maybe i don't know or did you went you went straight for the big no. budget well <laughs> ads <laughs> your first commission will always be your first commission <laughs> so that's true yeah you will always yeah. have to step into something that you've never done before it, it's unavoidable yeah um yeah you you can't you can't be experienced in something if it's your first time so um, what, type, what type of commissions do you normally do you normally take on, or did you take on in the beginning it, and it was really how, interesting. how has that changed for you yeah because like the i guess um intuitively you would think like oh okay the first commission should be like a five second clip and then like maybe a 10 10 second clip and then like, maybe a minute mm-hmm. clip but for me it's like the opposite i started off uh <laughs> super ambitious I, or what? <laughs> yeah 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 like um the the my first client wanted a a web series um of five minute long episodes and you know he had ambitions to make 10 of them um okay and i was like i can't make 10 but i can try and make one and then we'll see mm-hmm. how it goes from there and i made that one and i was like you know I was doing it at the same time as doing A-levels, I think. Um, yeah. And I was, uh, like, I dragged it over the finish line. It took me ages. Um, like, probably the best part of a year. And uh, and then I did another one. <laughs> and, um, uh, yeah, and, and the great thing about it was, uh, uh, and I couldn't have predicted this, but I, I said, can I, well, we worked out a way to, of payment, and, and it was a per hour kind of thing um per oh, right. hour of work so i logged the time on the timesheet which was great because i had no idea how much time it was going to take and how was he <laughs> how was he how how happy was he with that though that you went like i have no clue how funded. long does it take uh, it but you pay me by the hour he's a great guy I, I i'm still in contact with him now years later um he's a really really great guy and he, you know he had a lot of respect for for you know for the arts and he must have had a lot of faith in me because well i look back at that work and i'm just like oh my god that that just does it doesn't meet my today's standard but that's just a sign of progress i guess yeah yeah that's how it should yeah be. It, it was great though so that was because, quite a big thing then you took on basically like a, a five yeah. minute animation it's like that's, and that's and they've lot. gotten smaller and smaller and smaller <laughs> since so you know yeah. after that i i took on a music video it was smaller it oh, was yeah. like um four and a half minutes so not that much smaller but it was smaller and um I, although that was more ambitious visually visually mm. um and and it's gotten smaller and smaller until the point now where my ideal length is below 30 seconds like i, I yeah. think my last commission was like 20 seconds uh it was originally going to be 10 seconds but the client wanted a little bit more so you know we adjusted the the scope of the project to be to be more but like that's my ideal length now i like to do really small pieces of work and just bring my best to that and then to to move on because you know i love working on a really diverse range of projects where and and i can do that by choosing small projects whereas if you lock yourself into like like the what the the biggest projects are game projects in my opinion where they're like mm. you know we want cutscenes we want sprites effects like the whole works can you do it for us and like right, they yeah. might pay you a, a decent amount they might even pay you up front but <laughs> like you will be locked oh, yeah. into that for years for years yeah because so. that will also keep changing during development maybe and yeah. it has to be adapted and you know uh, yeah up- updated and whatever 
Yeah, so, yeah. So. I've actually never worked on. Oh, I've done a few assets for games, but very, oh, yeah. very, very small things. Uh, and uh, but I did a. I just did a trailer for um, for a friend's uh, mobile game, but it hasn't been released yet. But it's. Uh, oh, nice. That's like, but that's like purely uh, more like a. He's a. He's a good friend who's who's developing his thing. So I, I just thought I, I'll I'll join in, you know, and, <laughs> and help out. So hopefully that's out soon soonish. But we never know. Well, game game development takes so so much time, and you know you have to find yeah uh, financing and all that. So when that that came about, were you just like okay, I'm going to put my personal project on hold until this is done? Uh, well, I kind of I kind of put both the a bit more the the working stuff on on the hold because I am still oh, really? being I'm still pay, being paid but I'm just doing it more like a, a favor type thing as well so oh okay uh, or not a fa- no it's not true either I mean I'm I'm being paid uh, but I'm uh, but I, I I wanted to work for them really really oh, okay so I I put extra hours into it if, if you know what I'm what I'm saying yeah so like I, I I didn't mind working an extra few days unpaid just to to get it to the level that they they were after yeah hmm so yeah i i'm not sure if i can i don't want to like uh, <laughs> say anything about it yet because i don't know what what i what i may or that's may right we can keep say, it general it, yeah yeah <laughs> do you set rules for yourself and like freelancing do you say like i don't know what do, do you have any rules that you go by or principles that you go by but in terms of who I'm working for, or, or yeah, or like, oh, okay, I can, I can do this, but I, like you said there, you you wanted to spend some extra days uh, to to make sure it it looked really good. Like as an example, um, yeah. I I try and do my very best work on every project, oh, and yeah. if I'm not able to do that, then it's like it's really bad. <laughs> you know, then I, I don't I don't like the project. Oh yeah. You- you should always you should always do that yeah i think that yeah. that's if you don't do that then you probably will not have returning clients either so it has to be mm. your best work but it doesn't mean you should work till 12 o'clock every night because then you you know you burn out as well so i i would say um you should do as much as you can in the hours you've been paid let's say that so but then for a project like that i i was gladly working over hours just because i was also passionate about the project and i'm kind of you know, it's a good friend who's making the game, so mm. I just wanna, I just wanna make it as good as it can get. So it becomes <laughs> slightly personal for to me as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Have you experienced burnout? Not really. No, not. Uh, I mean, I've had projects that have gone on so that you are knackered, but not, <laughs> uh, not, uh, not a like a burnout as in a, a long-term thing. It's more just yeah. like, oh, I had. 200 renders to, to finish by, <laughs> by by the weekend you know and you yeah. just have to crunch it yeah uh we're both lucky then i think i haven't experienced burnout either I, I kind of get this thing which is it's definitely not burnout but i just get really impatient with uh wanting to do the next thing so i'll like mm. develop plans while i'm in the current project and be like as soon as this project is done I'm oh gonna yeah do this and that and i start fantasizing about what i'm gonna do next that's why why you said in the beginning as well where you said you don't like multitasking i i see that as a thing as well where if you have too many projects going on at the same time the one you were currently working or the one you were just working on while moving on to this other one gets kind of irrelevant suddenly do you know what Mm. i mean like you your your mind isn't with it fully so i think that's quite dangerous to to have too many things going on at the same time as well um yeah so i think i mean obviously i do work and my private stuff but if i have a, a busy working week with normal work i can't sit down and animate all evening after that on my film either I, then i just you know take some time off that as well and then by being freelance you have more um, weeks off that just kind of where no work is coming in or whatever and then you spend that time on the youtube or uh, like not <laughs> watching youtube but <laughs> making youtube <hopefully. laughs> uh, or um or yeah or, or stuff like this. Mm. Uh, do you have any uh, role models in in the space of animation or outside of animation who who you consider mm. to be like a model of success that you're kind of aspiring towards? Oh, uh, I think in terms of like work and 
uh, work ethic and stuff now this is probably like Miyazaki or someone like that you know who's <laughs> yeah. like making amazing amazing stuff though I saw did you see the the documentary about the 10 years following him I don't know uh, if you, I'm not sure if I've you've seen, seen that. one documentary about it's like him. four four episode or four 40 minute episodes or something oh, it's no. really really good I'll have to check that like, out it shows what a massive struggle he's he's in basically because he's has so much pressure on him to make good films one after yeah. another and and I think that's it was quite a humbling thing to see. Or like it's it's motivating to see that someone who you expect to be just such a master also just sit down there and scratches his head <laughs> all day, you know, yeah. like having a hard time. Um, yeah, that's really encouraging. I feel because it's like okay, yeah. he he's human. He oh yeah, he finds this stuff hard. Okay, that's good because if he found it easy, then it's like. Oh, there's just something wrong with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think everyone expect, especially all this, um, you know, with Instagram or whatever, where you can post your finished work and just have a massive feed of polished stuff. Uh, yeah. There's so much stuff there where people think, oh, these people are just pushing this out so easily without any struggle. But I'm sure everyone's having, you know, a, a hard time getting to that level, and you know, it's a lot of practice going in and a lot of failure going in. So yeah. But you never see that, so I think as a beginner, maybe you go like, "Oh God, I cannot, I cannot take on this because it's I, I can't do what they can do." Yeah. Um, but to see also then the absolute master that you that you um, aspire to, or not, maybe not aspire to be, but more have the you know the skills of or whatever, then you uh, if you see them struggle, I think that's kind of uh, it's, it's quite nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you think it's like? Do you think it's possible to reach the level of mastery and, and the level of accomplishment that Miyazaki has oh, reached but nowadays? Or do you think he was, he was like a product of his times and now hmm. whoever's coming up now, it will look different? Yeah, it will be different. I think uh, I, I wouldn't I don't think you can beat him in what he is doing exactly like it's like any other there's a lot of people who, who have that status i guess that they've accomplished something that maybe they have owned you know yeah um so i'm not i don't say that i want to i think i can become miyasaki because that's, <laughs> a, that's pretty 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 crazy to believe that but then but uh at least you can you can have them as role models and um I think it's also changed over the time. I didn't grow up on Ghibli films really, so I I I um I was more into like Star Wars and stuff as a mm. teenager. And I, I was definitely a um like that's how I started. I just made like Star Wars fan films with my brother. <laughs> I'd love to see uh, that. So I at that yeah. So at that point it was probably more like George Lucas or someone then who would be my uh, role model as a filmmaker and then mm. it changes over time. Um and at some point, that was the time when I started learning After Effects. Where um, I don't know, did you did you ever watch like Andrew Kramer and Video Copilot and that stuff to learn After Effects at all? Or uh, you know, yeah, you know like that? I I that's my education in in After Effects is a hundred percent YouTube videos. And, <laughs> and yeah, yeah. I think so, the odd lesson I I did I think I had like a few introduction lessons at university to help with that, but so mm -hmm. much of it was just like. Okay, I've drag and dropped my MP4 file into After Effects. Now what do I do? Uh, yeah, let's, yeah. let's look up the answer on YouTube. Yeah, because when, when I started out, there wasn't... I mean, now there's just so much uh, so much stuff on YouTube that, where you can just get everything for free. There wasn't so many sources for After Effects then. Like in, yeah. I don't know, 2009 or whatever. Yeah, then, Video uh, Copilot was king. Then Video Copilot was like the place you yeah. went to to learn it. And uh, I... I just kind of wanted to be the tutorial guy at that point and then a few right. few years later here i'm making some tutorials it's it's quite it's quite fun actually so is that the place where you got the initial idea to start a youtube channel about the process oh no no that was so so much um so much time in between there because i i basically started i think a few years into maybe just a year into freelance or something i just started uploading like a process um, mm. video of how I made a certain shot, and then that got quite a good response. And then I thought, okay, maybe maybe there is some people who wants to to see some of this. And then there was a, a few years where I think maybe two years or something on YouTube where basically nothing happened to my channel. It got a few views here and there, and I try to make a few videos. 
Um, mm. But then, was it a year or, uh, well, about two years ago, it just took off, um, or a year and a half maybe, and, uh, and it just went pretty crazy. It just requires one video to suddenly go viral, and then you have a bunch, bunch more people watching what you're doing. <laughs> It's quite interesting. Would you actually. like? Would you recommend to others that they start documenting the process? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I think that's super useful for yourself as well because you can just kind of go back in time and and see what you what you did last year or or how you made it and then um, yeah, you know, you see your progress really well. Like also just by posting something like a an Instagram feed or whatever, just putting up putting up stuff will will um, will allow you to see your progress really easily by just scrolling down that's really interesting yeah that that is a benefit that i guess i had overlooked in the beginning because i in the beginning i don't think i was doing it for that reason but then mm. i kind of uh found myself watching old videos that i'd made and being like oh that's where i was at that point in time and like yeah. it's it's nice you know I, i'm not someone who like gets the picture taken very much in like day-to-day -day mm. life and stuff so so being able to trace back to well like five years ago and see where i was in in, in my art as well as just as a person it's like this it's pretty interesting yeah that, yeah that's that's good did did you did you mainly when did you start your youtube channel like is it i think it has been, been on... about five years five years or maybe a bit more and when did when did you feel like it started kind of kicking off or did, was it a slow progress or was it like a an overnight type of situation uh, i think um oh yeah like when you make a, a big snowball in the snow mm -hmm. and like at first it's a lot of work and then it starts like just moving by itself and growing by itself yeah. um i think the i i guess the threshold i could say is probably around 10,000 subscribers yeah when um that, that would be a guess to me i i know i made an announcement at 10,000 subscribers and when and it was a, a very slow s slow kind of growth up till there first or yeah or like that... i had to i had to push it you know yeah. so oh, yeah, yeah. at the time there was this um there's google plus i don't think google plus is around anymore um, yeah, yeah. That was but like you a had year like that was... yeah <laughs> I, is Google Plus a thing? I don't think it is. I don't know. I don't think it is. No, I, I just remember everyone was like, you, "This is what we're gonna have to move on to," and then <laughs> yeah. no one did it. Yeah, like they integrated YouTube with Google Plus, and people hated that integration. Mm. But um, I would, I would effectively spam Google Plus. I joined like a hundred different groups, all animation related groups and um mm. I, i'm not saying this was a good thing <laughs> don't copy me <laughs> but i would like i would copy and paste the the link to my new video and i did this every week so i'd make a video and then copy and paste the link along with a little description of like hey guys i made this video and check it out it's about this and then and then i just um get open like 30 different tabs and go between uh, control tab, which basically, oh no, no, control, yeah, control tab, which shifts to the tab to the right, and then control V, and then control tab, control V, control tab, and I'd do that along all all 30 groups, so I'd paste in the the hyperlink, and <laughs> so I was, I was spamming the channels, and I would probably rake up like five views per group that I did that in or probably as a, at a guess I didn't keep track but yeah that's like an example of um pushing having to push the channel um and nowadays yeah. I would not do that because my time's better spent like making a better video yeah, yeah. <laughs> if yeah, you want sure. it to get seen more make a better video make a better well title and thumbnail as well are pretty important yeah, yeah. I think in the beginning I was also more like when when you did put out something you had put a lot of work into and you didn't get the like immediate uh you know um, gratification like no one saw yeah. it there was like 25 <laughs> people watching your videos okay it's that hard. Was worth it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and then and then you try to like oh, how can i reach out and, and now nowadays i think it's so much i or i actually don't know like i don't know where to go now to to get seen like it's not like there's a forum or something where you can post it and I, or I, at yeah. least i don't i don't feel like that's a thing anymore it's like uh there's a million places where <laughs> you might be seen so you have to just be kind of picked up by the algorithm or something 
Um, yeah, I think it's so much more dependent on the algorithm now. Yeah, I talk completely. Um, back then it was Google+, Plus, LinkedIn had forums, and they probably still do, and Facebook. Facebook has yeah. Facebook groups as well. Yeah. So I would use all of them. Um, but but nowadays the algorithm, we're all just at the mercy of the algorithm. I've never really, I never really dived into that. So I, I, yeah, it was pretty much you. Pretty much all, all up to the algorithm now. Yeah. So if they don't want to show your stuff, then it's just, it's a sad day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how, how much do you? How much does it affect you? Like, whether your video. I, I know you've had a few like really big successes uh, yeah. uh, with your yeah, videos, and it's like, wow, this one's just got like a million views. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't know. I don't know what makes that. I mean. Those are all action based, so maybe that's yeah. what it is. I just have to so I have to do it for those people. No, but I, I don't know. I It's actually really interesting because I think yours are the same as mine. Yeah. It's always I mean that stuff sells, so I I, I get yeah. it. But I, I'm not so much into the like if it has a million views or twenty thousand views, that's still a lot of people watching your videos. Yeah. I, I think that's that's still rewarding enough to hear that the kind of core group that you maybe focus your videos towards are, are watching it. And then if it gets yeah. viral or not, it's it's not the end of the world. But yeah, of course, it, it's also ben- you benefit from it maybe financially eventually if, if more people see mm. your stuff or whatever. Yeah, like 20,000, that can fill a stadium. <laughs> you know, that's how I think of it. Oh, yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? We get so completely like uh, distant from that number quickly it's like oh only 20,000 it's like what yeah <laughs> <That's> mental <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah it's very crazy I, you have like a video of like 2D and 3D animation combined and then you also have mm. um that your 2D action animation process oh yeah yeah which is just like a short little thing and that's just that's just like where have I seen that before it's like sorry Mine it had the same response, like when I, because I did a like similar topics and they both blew up, and I was like, oh, I know you like, did you did one with three D, right? like the one with the yeah, the, you kind of laid out a three D scene and then you ran a character through it, right? Yeah, yeah. I re- I remember that because uh, I I I researched as well what is what is uh, <laughs> like in this in this genre already made. And uh, right, I re- yeah. just knew that your thing had so many views. So I was like, okay, I got to tap into this 3D, 2D thing. You know? <laughs> so it's probably yeah, your, like, your, uh, your first idea there, um, tapping into Well, it. yeah, I mean, that's what I did a lot as well. Like, the great thing about YouTube channels is that, like, the information is public and you can see what's worked really well for other channels. And that's mm-hmm. what I would do with, that's like, um, Jazza was, was my guy, you know, and he... Mm. Um, I, I would always watch, like, I would look at his videos and you can sort them by most popular to least popular. And you can just see, like, oh, you know, that one about the fight scene did really well. The one about, like, a transformation did really well. And then, then I tried, I wouldn't, like, go out of my way to do them. But if I had, like, a transformation scene or something, I would try I would try and make a video about it. And uh, yeah. didn't always work, but sometimes you can. But honestly, it's so pre- unpredictable. Yeah, and, you, and maybe you have a maybe there's a ti- maybe you can title it then, so it kind of relates to them, like the one that's yeah. already done well. Because I think that actually helps too. Like if you title your video close to what's already been done and done really well, you might be recommended in the next video or something. So you yeah. can be smart about how you how you, you know, even if you've already made something about uh, I don't know. A specific topic you can name it to to fit the the algorithm i guess yeah yeah i i, I should look more at that yeah i should look more at that stuff but I, I end up being quite like i feel like you put so much work into a video that this whole world of just uh marketing as well is quite mm. a lot of work and i don't know if i have time <laughs> you know so i sometimes just hope that it's gonna be picked up and then if it doesn't i'm just gonna have to spend it making another video which is probably not the smartest method i should be better at you know well, i don't know i think you've probably I, it, it seems like you're doing really well like anyway even if you're not giving it a lot of thought with the marketing because I, and i think that comes down to like the inherent quality within the videos is really high yeah, but so, you can make something that might not be like if you put so much effort into it, you obviously want it to be seen as 
by yeah. as many people as possible. So it, I sh I should probably try a little harder on that on that part. I guess it kind of with me at least it it balances out. I will work really hard on a, on a video, and I will really mm. hope that that video gets seen by a lot of people. And then it doesn't. But then at the same yeah. time, I'll make a video that doesn't have that much work into it. It would be something that I did spontaneously, and then that gets seen by so many people. <laughs> So, that's exactly what mine has done too exactly that <laughs> those two <laughs> videos I was just like tests I did in an afternoon or an evening <laughs> or something and that's like okay a million yeah. people watch that that's pretty crazy I think it balances out yeah. yeah yeah maybe that's what we need to do just like spontaneously don't put too much thought into it apparently that's not the, the way to go <laughs> yeah just uh, throw things at the wall see if they stick yeah I, w I yeah I was going to ask you like what uh, do do you watch YouTube channels a lot and and if so which YouTube channels do you do you follow or learn from Yeah I think not so much in I mean I have a, I watch every now and then some animation stuff I don't think there's so much uh, out there that is uh, isn't just plain up tutorials do you know mm. what I mean like uh, Yeah like obviously tutorials you search for if you're after a specific thing but um I'm I like my my main part of YouTube goes into climbing I think so <laughs> it's like a completely different topic uh, but yeah I, of course uh, like uh, yours and uh, Tonico and uh, um, a few art channels and stuff like this I watch um, the climbing channels are doing really well though aren't they like um, oh yeah yeah Magnus Mitbo stuff. and like Adam Ondra have oh, great yeah. YouTube channels they're so good totally yeah even if you're not a climber I think they're great yeah they are like huge huge following as well yeah and entertaining stuff as well so yeah yeah for sure that's a world on its own really yeah I, how uh how experienced of a climber are you actually like uh, no, I'm, not. I'm wondering if i'm talking to like a world champion or no something no i'm not now. i'm not a long long time <laughs> climber but i'm a i i started in london and then uh, basically a, a reason to move down here was just be, to get not just for climbing but me and my girlfriend just wanted to to have like the mountains and the the nature to to be able to do these sports in like uh, I've skied all my life and and uh, and oh, uh, you know hiking and whatever so climbing I've done for a few years now um, but uh, no not a massively experienced I'm just super super uh, dedicated and I <laughs> you got the climbing the bug so, yeah oh yeah I got I got hooked straight away when I started and then I just couldn't stop and um, yeah. Yeah, my younger brother is like obsessed with climbing now. He's got the oh, hangboard yeah. up in the house. Yeah, same, he's hoping yeah. that he'll at some point manage to set up his own like boards. I don't know what you call them. Yeah, so, yeah. All the all the climbers in the in the Corona times, it's been a hard time when you can't go to the gym. For example, obviously we were uh, lucky here that we can be outside. So that's I spent pretty much the whole summer and uh, autumn on on rock instead but then um but having having the climbing gyms close is kind of it's uh, it's, it's hard on me because that's where you get your like afternoon training yeah. and, you know it's hard to just kind of pop out in the woods <laughs> yeah and you say you ski as well so is do you get like a seasonal pass where you are or do you go for just yeah. like shorter periods yeah. by living in innsbruck you you can buy a um like a year-round ticket that takes that gives you all the ski resorts and all the <sighs> cable cars in like I don't know a bunch of uh, areas here pretty much wow. all of Tirol basically so you can yeah ski as much as you want so it's, it's pretty it's awesome it's really quite sad because uh, I yeah I've my my skiing trip has just been cancelled because of the yeah. coronavirus situation yeah I think so. now it's also like there is you can go ski now but um, I find it a little too like uh off putting when you see the big crowds and stuff because it's still you know mm. big queues at the bottom and stuff and i don't think it's very uh, covid safe so i think yeah. that's where it first broke out in europe was in a ski resort yeah exactly yeah <laughs> it's a bit a bit crazy but yeah um I've, I've avoided it a bit this year um and i, I want to get into like ski touring and uh you know where you don't need the lifts but mm. uh, that's a whole other equipment you need. So I gotta <laughs> gotta buy all that stuff. This is so expensive when you move to the mountains. There's so many things you can do. You know? <laughs> yeah, I know that like the climbing equipment is so expensive as well. Like just for like the jackets or the ropes and stuff. It's 
And you go through shoes quite fast, yeah. 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 I guess you do want to pay for quality if it's going to, like, if, if it's holding up your life, you know. Yeah. Onto the wall. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you don't want, a, don't want an old, your old grandpa's rope or something, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but you should definitely buy the new stuff and, since your life depends on it. All oh, right. Well, um, I'm I'm gonna link your channel to uh, to this video so that people can go and watch you. I'm I'm sure that we've got like a big overlap already in yeah. audiences. Like it's very very so. likely because um, I love your videos as well. So oh, cheers. Likewise. Man. <laughs> well, yeah, and thank you so much for having this conversation with me today, and and for for all the people listening. Um, yeah, thanks so much for giving. That's your time. Yeah, thanks for having me on board. Great talking to you. Wish you all the best. Same to you.